Hubert Von Toul, Professor of History at Georgia Regents University, and I'm also an amateur organist. I'm currently also the organist at Ascension Lutheran. Last summer I taught a course on the history of the organ and its music, focusing on a series of organs here in Augusta. I've taken advantage of the fact that we have an exceptionally diverse and interesting collection of organs. There are a couple that stand out in recent Augusta history. Historically, the most interesting is probably the organ at uh, the Church of the Most Holy Trinity, Catholic Church downtown, an organ which was actually constructed uh, for the church in New York City by the Jardin family right at the end of the Civil War, which is probably one reason why it took a couple of extra years to bring it down. Uh, this organ is a fascinating instrument designed specifically for the accompaniment of the Catholic Mass of that uh, era and uh, and works perfectly well today as well for that particular space but also for that particular sound uh, you know some organs of course are constructed to uh, shall we say uh, meet the needs of the organist or of the organ builder uh, but the Jardin organ at Most Holy Trinity you can really tell it when playing that it was designed specifically for the church service, uh, the kind of church service for which it was intended. And I think that's one of the uh, secrets as to why it's so, uh, why it's as good as it is. And what also makes it interesting is that it uh, reflects what might be called, what is often called the romantic organ sound of the 19th century. And not too many of those organs survive. A great many of those organs, uh, quite frankly, were neglected or gotten rid of in the 1950s and 1960s when uh, tastes among organists shifted to the, uh, uh, to the Baroque. I do not know if any of the Jardine family ever came and visited the church itself. I just don't know. Uh, so they must have had a lot of uh, experience in building organs for churches of similar size. But maybe even more important is that they would have been intimately familiar with the needs of the Catholic Mass, where especially you need an organ that is capable of doing a soft and gentle sound that can support uh, the choir, the cantor, and also the priest when the priest is doing the sung part of the Mass. A, an organ, from the moment that you start playing, an organ has to uh, set, shall we say, the atmosphere for the service. And that's very important. You know, an organ that is too loud or too harsh, that would disturb the prayers or the meditations of the congregants, uh, that just wouldn't work, especially in that kind of a setting. It's interesting that we have so many, and it's interesting that they've survived. And the reason it's interesting is that you have, of course, a developing tendency toward uh, contemporary religious music, which does not, of course, use the organ. The organ seems to be holding its own. And one thing the churches are discovering is that many people coming into churches, including younger parishioners, often want traditional music. And uh, the established churches tend to support this, so they seem to be holding their own quite well.